Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the Baselight Tools series. Today we're going to be building a film look using the Defuse Operator tool. Lots of the time when a client asks for a film look, they expect really nice soft highlight roll off. And the Defuse tool can help us get that really nice soft glow look. So uh, let's get into it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a grade layer using the keyboard shortcut P. I'm going to be working mostly with the base grade operator. I'm going to click on the outside of the ring here and I'm going to drag in a counterclockwise circle. You can see when I'm doing this, the exposure of the clip changes. So I'm going to go ahead and go up a little bit more and that's a nice starting point. I'm going to uh, make this film look um, a little bit cooler. Film and film stock had lots of different looks and um, I love the sort of bluey green cyan look. I'm going to go ahead and um, drag it more towards the blues and the greens. Being careful not to lose that skin tone entirely. That's probably a good starting point. Um, so again, to at any point, if I want to see what I've done, I can select my layer, hit Function, Command, F11. Okay, so that's a, that's a nice base look. Um, so now I'm going to introduce a Defuse tool. So I'm going to add another grade layer. I'm going to go ahead and right-click one of my operators and change it to the Defuse tool. Clicking on here, you can see that we have a diffuse, saturation, aspect, and a mix slider. Um, so the first two ones which you'll want to play with are the diffuse and the mix. So if I rack up the diffuse, nothing happens. But now if I rack up the mix, you can see two things will be happening. First of all, I'm mixing through the diffusion onto my image. And you can also see that we are desaturating my image. So now we've got a completely black and white image. So that's where the saturation slider comes in. Uh, if it's set to zero, your diffusion will also desaturate your image. Uh, in this case, I want to keep all of that saturation, so I'm going to drag my saturation slider all the way to the top. Now the aspect is interesting. You can see the diffuse becomes quite vertical. And if we drag it all the way the other way, you can see the diffusion becomes quite horizontal. So this is a very stylized look, and I don't really use it often. So I'm going to reset this aspect and keep it at zero. This doesn't look very good, so I'm going to bring uh, the mix down to probably about 0.5. Okay, so you can see as I adjust the diffusion, we are going from just a little bit of glow around the highlights to the glow really coming out more and um, becoming a wider glow. Um, so I think 0.5 actually worked quite well for now. Um, it does look a little bit soft overall. So what I tend to do with the Defuse tool is I use it in conjunction with a shape. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the S key to add a shape. And I'm going to go up to my Quick Shape and add a left gradient. If you don't see this pop up, make sure you go down to your Cursor view and make sure that your overlays are on. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this up, drag this out, and rotate this guy a little bit. Okay. So, to preview this uh, glow on and off, I'm going to hit my layer 2, function command F11, and you can see. So it adds a nice amount of glow without overpowering the image, um, and it just gives that, um, especially on these harsher highlights, it just gives a nice soft roll off. Um, again, I might uh, mix it a little bit more in, it's a little bit strong, so I might mix it back a little bit, again bypassing it on and off. So I'm going to add a little bit more to my film look. I'm going to go back up to my uh, initial look setting layer, and I'm going to introduce some flare. The flare tool lifts your black point. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust the flare up just to pinch those shadows up a little bit. That looks quite nice. And um, I might just go ahead and increase my level of color. Now, uh, at the same time, I'm also going to increase my contrast. Not that much. So I'll go crazy with it. Maybe the 1.5 mark. Cool. So to preview what we've done so far, we're going to go ahead and lasso all of our layers. Function, Command, F11. We're going to add two more things. We're going to add a vignette. So I'm going to add another grade layer using P. We're going to hit uh, S to add a shape. I'm going to add a vignette. Hit the O key to turn my overlays on. Um, I'm going to leave the feather the way it is, but I'm going to add a matte tool to my stack. I'm just going to erode dilate this shape just to make it even softer. Nice. Cool. Clicking on the shape, I might um, adjust it slightly more to the light source. So I'm going to go ahead and click this up. Make sure this fits the window more. Hit the OK key. 
Now, I'm going to select the outside of the shape, hit the base grade tool, and I'm going to go ahead and drag the exposure down. Okay, cool. That's too much. So I'm going to go ahead and go back the other way. That's quite nice. So again, uh, function command F11. And uh, the last step is I might add myself a grain layer. I could add this again in the inside outside layer, but um, I might go up to the insert menu and add myself an add grain strip. I'm going to go ahead, uh, the way I like to apply grain, if I zoom in here, I'm going to ramp up the intensity <laughs> to full, and you can see it looks horrendous. The first thing that you might notice is the grain has color. When we see colored noise, we tend to think of digital noise, not um, film grain. Um, so the first step, which I always like to do, is take my channel correlation and put that all the way up to one, which will eliminate all of that color, which is great. I can adjust my size here but I'm going to leave that all the way down to 1. And now I'm going to bring my intensity all the way down. So um, normally I leave my intensity around the 0.4 mark. I think 0.4 looks quite nice. You can still see the texture there, but it's not too overpowering. I'm going to zoom out with function option F12. We're nearly there. Let's go ahead and lasso function command F11. Uh, I think it's almost there. Um, the one thing that I do just want to add and I might add this in a separate layer. So I'm going to go ahead, select my layer 2, and I'm going to change my color wheel display to the set of RGB sliders. So I'm going to hit this, and you can see we have an RGB slider for the shadows. You can see down here we have a gang button. This is enabled, so that means if we adjust any of these um, color channels, it'll adjust all of them at once. Uh, but we don't want that, um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off these gangs. You can adjust the red channel, green channel and you can adjust the blue channel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of green to the shadows so I'm going to go ahead and increase this by a touch also add a little bit of blue in there that's quite nice you can see the skin tones are a little bit contaminated now so I'm going to go over to my mid tones do the same thing and push a little bit of red back into the mid tones it's quite nice. Um, in fact, that might be enough. We go ahead and lasso everything. Function command F11. You can see that's quite a nice look. Alternatively, if we wanted a slightly warmer look, it's a very simple change. If we bypass our layer 2, and then go to our layer 1 and sort of push that more towards the sepia tones, um, we have a very different looking image. Again, keeping that film look uh, to it. So you can see we have two very different options, um, a cooler film look and a warmer film look. Building looks is really fun, and if you guys have any suggestions or things that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks.